In this video, I want to demonstrate how I would fill out a setup sheet, such as this one here, as I prepare to program my part shown over here. So first, for the programmer, I'd put me, I'd enter the date. If there were a fixture number for this program, I would enter it here. I've entered my drawing number, as seen here. I've said the program name is PU50 OP10, because it's the first machining operation on this part. I've given the program a number, 1234. And then I've said the stock size is 6061 aluminum, and it's a half inch by inch and a half by two and a half eighth long. Certain areas of the setup sheet cannot be filled out until the part is actually set up and started machining, such as this. I don't know the actual X, Y, and Z value for my G54 work offset, so I can't fill that out yet. Next, down here in the corner of my sheet, I always do a sketch on my part with a big dot showing where the zero is, and I've said this is location on the part of the G54. Just a quick visual reference. Here I would add any specific notes that might pertain to this particular part and program. In this section, this is where everybody takes ownership. So if I've created the CNC program, the manuscript, I'm going to initial and date it here. If I input it in the machine, same thing, initial and date it. If I prove the program out, initial and date it. If I've optimized it, and if I'm the one who put the hard copy in the filing cabinet, again, I would initial and date it. So next, we're going to have some tools. So I've entered, here's tool number one, and I want to describe it. Well, before I can describe it, I have to decide what tool will I use. So I'm going to come over here to my part print. As I stated earlier, the first tool I'm going to use is going to come in here, round this corner off, clean up this end, and come off here. So there's nothing limiting its diameter in this geometry, but I do have to keep in mind the vice jaw is over here. So I don't want too large a tool, and I also have to find a tool that has at least 10 mil or 0.394 of flute length. So I'm going to go here, and here's typical available two flute end mills that I can get. The first thing I need to do is make sure I get to at least half inch of flute length. Well, one eighth is too small. So I'm going to scroll down and look at these. And down here, I see a three eighths end mill. I'm going to use it. It has one inch of flute length. So over here for the description, I'm going to enter. This is a three eighths of an inch carbide. And I use EM for end mill. I'm going to say it's too fluted and that the flute length is one inch. As soon as I know the height offset, I'll add it here. The diameter offset I do know, it's going to be 3 16 And now I want to describe the operation. So let's go back and look at the print again. I'm going to use this tool to rough this end. I say rough because I will be roughing it and leaving 25 to 50 thou along this surface for the finished tool. So down here for operation, I'm going to say rough the right side and leave 25 thou for finish tool or finish cut. What else will this tool do? Well, I'm also going to round off these five mil radiuses. I'm going to say round to five millimeter rads. So that's tool one. This is a rough tool. I'm also going to need to finish it. So next I'm going to say, well, I want to do this top surface. So I'm going to put tool two here. And then I have to ask myself, would I want to rough this end first or do the top surface first? I think I would do the top surface first and then rough that end second. So I'm going to move all this. I'm going to cut it and I'll paste it. And this will actually be tool two. Then for tool one, I'm going to use a three quarter inch carbide end mill. Again, I'll make it a two flute. And that's a good enough description for that. The flute length won't matter. Again, I don't know the height offset. The diameter offset will be 3 8 And for this, I have to go back and say, okay, the finish size is 0.394. The part thickness is half inch. So I have just over 50 thou to come over, off of both top and bottom. So if I'm making a lot of these, let's assume for now I am, I'm going to want one cutter to rough and one cutter to finish because I'll take roughly 30 to 50 thou off the top and then a light 10, 20 thou cut for finish. And same thing when I do the bottom. So this is going to be a three quarter carbide end mill. And my description here will be to rough the top surface. And I'm also going to say I want to leave, let's say 10 thou 
for a finish cut. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say, okay, tool three. I'm going to use another three quarter carbide two flute end mill. So I'll just copy this and paste it. Again, this will be three eighths and it's going to be finished the top surface. Then tool four, I'm going to use another three eighths end mill. So once again, I'll copy this and paste it. And this end mill will finish this end. Next, I'll drill these four holes and tap them. So I'm going to need to go down to the sheet where I can see what they are. Two of these are M3 by 0.5 drilled holes, and two of these are quarter 20 tapped holes. All four holes will need to be spot drilled, drilled, and then tapped. So I'll come back over here and I'll add those tools. So I decided to use a 3 8 high speed steel spot drill to drill all holes. Then the number seven drill to drill for the quarter 20 tap. A two and a half mil drill to drill for the M3 tap holes. And then I'll use a quarter 20 spiral flute tap and then an M3 by 0.5 spiral flute tap. The next process is to machine these slots. So I'll go to the sheet that shows their details. So again, I'm going to have to go to the supplier's website and find appropriate tools to rough and finish these. And I have to also be aware that these pockets here have a three degree draft angle on the wall. So I would like that ground into my cutting. So after looking through my supplier catalog, I've decided to use a 3 16th carbide slot drill to rough these holes. And when the person says a slot drill, they mean a two flute center cutting end mill so that I can plunge into the material. So I'll use that to rough all slots. I'll use another 3 16th carbide slot drill to finish these two slots. And finally, I'll use a 3 16th carbide slot drill with three degrees of taper per side to finish all of these slots. Now that I've selected all my cutting tools, I can go ahead and start creating the GNM code. If you still require more information about how to select tools and process plan, please go to my playlist where I explain process.